is 30, I think. Is, are we on 30? Is this our inaugural 30th episode? I know. If only there was some way to check. Like going to redsupray.lipson.com, which I'm doing there's, right there's now. There's no way. Hey, this plugs? Is, this is 30. Maybe dropper? I know. It's crazy. Nice. All right. Well, howdy, folks. Welcome to Rutsu Talk episode 30. We have come so far, have we not? Mm, I guess so, yeah. It feels like just 30 weeks ago that we started this. <laughs> well, it's actually been much longer than that. <laughs> How long have we been doing this dumb crap? I think we started in June or July of last year. Mm-hmm. It's been over a year. Yeah, it seems like we uploaded Pilot on uh, June 27th, right? That sounds correct. Yeah. Wow. Crazy stuff, dude. And here we are now. So much has changed. I know. We're doing this one live as well. Yeah, this is the first time we've done a live thing just with the two of us. Yeah, absolutely. We're letting the chat help guide our conversation a bit instead of us trying to pitch things to talk about, because we've seen how well that goes. Oh, boy. <laughs> Ugh. Tell me about it. Terribly, that's how it goes. Right. We're just experimenting, trying to find the best and most pleasing way to podcast. Mm-hmm. So maybe we'll do live things forever from now on, on I, a weekly basis. I don't see why not. Why not? Maybe, maybe uh... Yeah. <laughs> maybe we'll Constant get... Constant guests. Maybe we'll get tons of guests. Maybe we won't. We'll have... Let's have a podcast with... There's 335 people in the chat right now. Mm -hmm. Have all of them talk to each other and record. And we'll listen. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And then we'll have computer animated avatars for all of them. Talking. Right. Like maybe something out of Dynasty Wars, only it's like all the soldiers you're talking to each other about. Like The fanfic ideas are just going crazy in my head right now. Oh, well, I've a, I'm already writing like a couple as we speak. I've already got one with Fire Kip and Hilda Tilda <laughs> just coming together right now. Those are two random names in the chat I just picked up. Oh, no? Oh, really? It's not because Hilda But they are the, the, oh, what's the three-letter thing? Uh, excuse me? Some oh, fanfic and... lingo? I'm sorry? You, uh, OMG? You know, OTP is what the chat is saying. I don't understand. What is OTP? I, uh, are you down with OTP? You know me. Okay. All right! I don't know what it stands for. Oh, one true pair. I get it. So, one true pair. I guess it's like when, yeah, like Kirk Spock, you know? One true pair? That's the best thing they could come up with? <laughs> I, I think so. The one true pair. You know, someone I just saw... That's what I call my favorite pair of socks. <laughs> you know, so Go people ahead. I make fuck. I don't know. <laughs> well, um, someone in the uh, chat brought up a topic I, I would uh, I would very much like to bring up, talk about. Okay. Happened to us today with one of our videos. Oh? Uh, pl our, our video of plumbers don't wear ties. Oh, right. Got uh, flagged on YouTube and is now age inappropriate. Yeah, the video's still there. Yeah, it's not it's not a strike against us, but right. Much much like one other video we have, uh, you need to. But now, yeah, but now anyone under a certain age signed onto YouTube can't watch it. I think is what happens. Yeah, it's uh, I I really can't figure out for the life of me though what. Yeah, you did a pretty hardcore job of censoring everything. And in all honesty, I even censored stuff that I didn't think I had to. Like he pulls like. In the one scene where the guy kind of pulls his towel, towel down a little bit, you know? And I'm yeah, like, my favorite scene, yeah. Yeah, he's absolutely. No, I was hard. Yeah. Um, right. in, in a totally straight way. Uh, mm -hmm. No, no, no. But, like, you know, I, I'm like, there's nothing shown here. You can't see anything. But just in case, you know? Like, I went above and beyond, you know? I, Do you think it was, like, the suggestion of sexual stuff? Like, the whole, take your clothes off. But the original video... Without our commentary seems okay. True. And in fact, if you want to know the truth, the original video has the straight up nudity in it. That's true. So, so how does the flagging system work? So it's not some program that gets run over random videos, but enough people have to say, uh, I got a problem with this, and then yeah. YouTube automatically does something with it? Yeah, because I'll, I'll tell you, because the other, the second one we got was the Adultery Act of PewDiePie video. And to, right. be, to be fair, that did violate community guidelines with uh, mm -hmm. uh, the risk cutting and the nah. self mutilation and suicidey stuff. No, no, it was actually Red Mercer token up on the bong. Oh right, it was drug the use, drug right? part, yeah. right? Because the suicide stuff was obviously you know fake. You know what right, I mean? Right. Like, but yeah, uh, but he was actually smoking. Yeah, exactly, or appeared right. to be. 
Could, right. could have been tobacco. Who knows? What if he was in Washington State or Colorado, huh? Yeah. <laughs> How about you retroactively unflag it now that laws are saying it's okay? I You'd think, right? But huh? apparently not. Um, but mm. I, I, I'm wondering if something similar happened, you know? Uh, where people Possibly. people got upset with plumbers don't wear ties, start flagging it. But I have a side boobophobia. But the Skyrim video, excuse, <clears throat> excuse me, the Skyrim video, uh, strangely though, never got flagged. And true, that's that's not really that bad either, though. That's just bikini girls, really. You know. Yeah. I mean, it's it's odd, certainly. That that ended up being one of the more controversial videos we did too, for some reason. That and the Minecraft. Ladies mod thing? Oh, yeah, sexy block party. Yeah. I I don't get people... Okay, well, let's we'll shelf Skyrim for a second. Why why did people... I mean, other than, oh, it's just a fun, silly thing, which, okay, yeah, whatever, but, like, w- how did people defend that, where it's like, like, why are you making fun of, like, sexy Minecraft mods? It's like, how, how could you not? Well, let me turn it around, Slow Beef. How do you defend yourself being so sex-negative? <laughs> I mean, all right. I first of all, what does sex negative mean? Um, as far as I understand it, um, sex negativity is uh, is a term that is that um, when you fuck batteries? That is when you, yes. No, that's okay. when you fuck the black terminal of a battery. Oh okay. no, red. Excuse me, red. Right. Uh, right. No, it's um, it's when you I guess shame people about sex and say sex is something you're not supposed to talk about or whatever. Or do uh, right whatever. and. Right. Um, People kind of have, some people have now co opted it to sort of defend um, pornography and things like that, you know, and say, like, why are you being so sex negative? What's wrong with, like, you know? It, it's sort of like if you're saying, if you say something like, Dragon's Crown objectifies women or whatever, but like, why are you being sex negative? And it's like, okay, you know. That sounds like how robots would talk about it, though. <laughs> he is being sex negative. Right. I think it's, I think it's used in some sort of like, oh, let's, Let's take those terms and use it against them, kind of way. You know what I mean? But um, I see it. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I the Minecraft one, I, I think, is arguing for the sake of arguing, more or less, because it's like, how do you make fun of a, a sexy Minecraft mod? And again, it's like, what? It, they're <laughs> what? It seems much easier to make fun of one than to support one. It's like an eight by eight pixel texture. You know what I mean? Like, what yeah. are you fucking talking about? Like. And again, don't get me wrong, the kid who made it, who actually thought our video was funny, by the way, I'm sure he wasn't getting on mine. It was probably just a weird thing, he'd, silly thing he did, and that, you know what I mean? Well, didn't he say as much yeah. after the fact? Yeah, more or less. I think he was yeah. playing around. Like, oh, yeah, this was a really weird thing I made years and years ago. But you know what's funny about the Skyrim mod guy? And I and I mean, we, we the guy who makes those videos, is right. he reviews, and he has like a whole series where he reviews these Skyrim mods. Every fucking custom thumbnail is like the sexy Skyrim mod he does that week. You know what I mean? Coincidence? Absolutely. It must Hmm. be. Well, actually, there are probably so many sexy Skyrim mods. You know, it's like, I just... It's one thing, I guess, to play, like, a sexy kind of game on its own, but, like, how fucking horny are you where it's like, I cannot... Extremely. Oh, oh, you're talking about... (laughs) I cannot even play Skyrim for an hour without ass and tits in my face 24-7, you know? Because, you know, I thought I was a randy kind of guy, but apparently not. Look, Skyrim is a game you spend, like, 80, 100-plus hours in. <laughs> if you're going to be dedicating that much time, why don't you get to see some tit If I If I'm going to grind for a dragon, I need a fucking G-string Amazon warrior's ass right in my fucking face. And speaking of dragons, where are the tits <laughs> on that dragon? I, you know what? Why don't you mod the dragon into a giant bikini girl? I want to see udders out of that dragon squirting milk everywhere, man. <laughs> it's sexy that way. It is. <laughs> that would be my sexy mod. <laughs> By the way, that reminds me. Have you seen the new sexy uh, MMO? I don't think it's uh, new, actually, but... If, if Final if, Fantasy XIV, or is this something else entirely? This, it's this thing called Scarlet Blade. Okay. It's like, uh, it's some, I think, German MMO. And, like, I, I saw an advertisement for it, then I looked on YouTube, and there's just tons and tons of Let's Plays of it. <laughs> and it's, like, it's basically, like, um, it's all, like, really, it's, like, really scantily clad anime girls, but, like, in 3D, you know? But it's an MMO, so... 3 double D. Yeah, but so you get to play this game, like, socially. 
Hmm. You know, so it's like, hey, we're all, it's like a, it's like a chat room where you fight things and also everyone is erect, more or less. All right, well, it's about time they made a video game for men. I'm sorry, or, or, or uh, maybe, you know, or uh, turned on too. Who knows, you know, I'm sure yeah. women are into that shit too. Sure. Less so, but you know, hey. We're playing that game right now, by the way. Oh, as yeah. we're talking. Well, yeah. no, I mean, I, I, well, I'm, I'm hard off just podcasting personally. Mm-hmm. That's what gets me off. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, 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 I've modded the podcast, so you are, in fact, the sexy, like, anime Something girl. Something about tits. that microphone logo just gets my imagination rolling. Well, you know what? I, I made a tweet about this, which, like, which was, um, this is a true story. When I was younger, uh, I was in a pool hall, like, down the street from me or whatever, and they had, I, I don't remember the game. It was either X-Men vs. Street Fighter, or it was one of those where, you know, it was like a Capcom fighting game, start with the X-Men in it. All right. And, uh, Psylocke was one of the playable characters. And a, and a couple of these guys were playing it or whatever, and the, and Psylocke's, like, boobs kind of were moving in her, like, standing animation before the fight, and the guy, like, laughs and, like, rubs her, like, rubs the screen where her boobs are. And, uh, I said a thing on Twitter, like, I bet nowadays people would actually defend that. And a couple people actually defended that. Like, well, he's not hurting, <laughs> like, he's not hurting anyone, is he? And it's like... <sighs> well, there's this dignity, for one. Well, like, yeah, like, what happened? I mean, you used to laugh at shit like that. Now it's like, no, 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 that's, everyone has a right to, you know, uh, get to, freedom of speech! Get to second base in an arcade, in a public arcade. What's wrong with that? It's like, I don't think I, that's even second base when there's a whole layer of glass and that, dimensions separating. That's, but that's as close to second base as you're getting with Psylocke. Correct me if I'm wrong here! Well, you could go to Dragon Con. But that, that's a, that's a person then! True. Yay! Like that's... And you'd probably go to jail. Uh, well, I, I meant, like, if you're going to second base, meaning, like, you know, like, after you're making out and stuff, you know. Oh, sure. Yeah. Not not that she's in a fighting pose, and you're like, hold on, I'll just rub here, you know, I that was, I didn't mean to imply that. Let me that. just put this window glass between your <laughs> boobs and my hand, so I... it's okay. <laughs> By the way, this sexy podcast is so going to get us flagged on YouTube for community oh, stuff. Man. I know it. <laughs> I have to edit all of this out. This is going to be a Twitch exclusive. <laughs> That's it. Psylocke is pretty hot. Um, yep. <laughs> oh, and also people, by the way, wanted to point out, um, in Plumbers Don't Wear Ties, um, yeah. the the woman, Jane, is a, a glow wrestler, I think, named Hollywood. A glow wrestler? Yeah. Gorgeous Ladies of Wrestling. Ah, right. Right. Okay. <laughs> Duh. So, how did her career go after that game? Beats me. <laughs> I apparently though she was hoping plumbers don't wear ties would launch her uh, movie career. <laughs> I don't. Under- Everybody in that game thought that. <laughs> so I saw Doc Futures um, let's play of plumbers don't wear ties uh, years ago. Um, I and I don't remember if it was a, it was really just a long play or he actually did comment over. It. He's a really funny guy, Doc Future. Um, you've seen his stuff, right? Sonic Two. Oh yeah, yeah. His Sonic yeah special CD edition and. Um... That really casual playthrough of the first Sonic game. Yeah, he's a really good guy. He's a really funny guy. Um, he did Plumbers Don't Wear Ties. I really don't remember exactly what he did with it. Um, and then apparently, which people got mad at us for too, Angry Video Game Nerd did a review of Plumbers Don't Wear Ties. He beat us to it. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and again, remember on YouTube, if a very popular person does something, you are just not allowed. Yeah, it's claimed. Absolutely. Effectively. Absolutely. Absolutely. To be fair, I mean, you know, I guess people felt that way about Let's Play back in the day, but then we kind of got over it, you know? Mm. Well, you know, it's it's the opposite way. It's not like, it wasn't like people were going like, hey, this guy did it first. It's It was more like, um, people were like, I kind of want to do it, but I don't want to step on anyone's toes or whatever. And then, you know, most people were like, well, don't worry about it, just do the Let's Play. Although now there is that, um, which is brought up on a previous podcast, like the whole, what are you bringing to the table thing? You know, which hopefully yeah. we're kind of like moving out of soon. Do you think Let's Play is being taken too seriously in this day and age? I don't know. Um, y- I feel like streaming is becoming more prominent as a reaction. I'm wondering to some that. of the yeah. serious stuff that happens in Let's Play. Like maybe the standards are getting too rigorous that people don't get the chance to relax and have fun so much. I'll tell you where I first kind of noticed it was um, Psychedelic Eyeball did these videos of. Uh, Super Meat Boy, where he was playing Super Meat World. Oh, yeah. He didn't post it on SA, he just did it on his YouTube channel, and he was like, I don't know if this is really a Let's Play or whatever. 
but I got, you know, because I didn't really say anything to him ever or whatever, but I was thinking, like, well, you know, it's video content. It's good. What's the problem, you know? Yeah. It's, it's I mean, it's tricky. I don't know. Because you don't want it to become, like, uh, a thing like it used to be, in a way, you know? Where, like, you got the couple of, like, the, the really popular people, and you could never say anything bad about them, even when they did stuff bad. But, sure. but yeah, I think maybe it, it can, have, it's gone maybe in the direction now where everything has to be fucking perfect. So maybe we don't, yeah. I don't think there's any balance to be achieved. I think the things I've learned modding Let's Play, in, in general, I think when you're dealing with like large groups of people like that, there is no happy medium per se. You just kind of have to waver around what would have been the happy medium. You know what I mean? Yeah, there are threads that are kind of built around the more cash nature of things, like, God, you, you, uh, let's fail stuff. What, can you what? stop with the cash? Why? Do it's you, killing me. Just cash, well, what's the problem? Somebody's not being so cash oh, gravy. in this stream. You're that's what streaming is all about. That's what I've brought to the streaming table is the sense of cash. You brought... And that's right, chat. That is a, should be a hashtag. Oh, wow. Everyone hashtag cash and talk about Retsu Talk on your Twitters. <laughs> Oh, and be relaxed about it. Cash rules everything around me. Cash. Cash. Okay. All right. No, I get it. It's no, uh, but in all seriousness, yeah, I think I I've talked a bit to, with uh, Zorak about it, and you know we, we, we're a little up in the air on exactly what we want to do. It might just be some decree where it's like, okay, knock it off with you know everything has to be absolutely fucking perfect kind of thing. Because we could, yeah. you know, and we have had to be fair to us, we have or let's play that is we have had fuck around. Um, Let's play is before, like, Tip and 40, Soda Pop Boys, things like that, you know? Even recently... I've, yeah, just the barrier of entry, I think, is increased for people who are trying to take that approach. Like, if they put something in a sandcastle, it's them just kind of joking around and not being over super serious about it. Yeah, that's... People will inevitably object to it, even though the sandcastle is not this mystical gate you have to pass through before posting something. Right. Well, that's the, it's the so. tricky thing about it is, you know, I almost want to say, if you want to have a fuck around Let's Play... All you care about there with the sandcastle is your technical shit, more or less. Just, is this, does this look good? Like, did I compress it right? Is my audio okay? You know, et cetera. And then when people chime in with you to know much to say or whatever, just, yep, yep, you know, you know, certain criticism you do have to, like, say, I should accept this and follow it and whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like anything. Well, I mean, with us, because we, like, Retsu Praise, like, a YouTube channel, uh, we get a lot more disparate criticism and, uh, the opposite, like positive and negative, you know what I mean, from all over the place, and it's it, it's a lot harder to sort out what you accept and what you reject. Yeah, you know, what like, you should listen to. Right, yeah, you know, because there's the one school of thought, like um, I think uh, Leo Venus had, which was um, your fan, not not, not in Retro Prey in particular, but like in Let's Play in general, is uh, your fans have no fucking idea what they want, and you have to dictate to them what they want, because they will lead you astray, you know. I feel like we had a hard time at first with kind of weaning off of the Let's Play videos mm -hmm. with Retsu Prey. Right. Like, I've, especially recently, I've seen a lot of kind of demand for it, and yet I think the non-Let's Play stuff is better. Well, I don't know. I I actually like the, the Retsu Prey stuff, the Let's Play stuff. I, st I still like it, don't get me wrong, but I think... I think the Flash games and the game games just provide more of a wealth of material, whereas in a Let's Play video... You know, there may be one thing or two things that the player easy mistakes to fix that are easy to fixate on, fixate on, and then not much else to talk about. Whereas with a game or a flash game, there's just so many different you, things going on. I feel like you have to dig more, not because there is not bad let's plays out there. There certainly are, but because you have to find ones that are exceptionally bad in the right way that you can make fun of for ten plus minutes. You know? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Because, like, I mean, it depends, too. If you take, like, one of, um... What's a more popular one we've done recently? Oh, um... A Let's Play video? Yeah, like, the Sonic the Hedgehog, the bad frame rate one. Yeah. That's, like, everyone loves that one. That had gone off for half an hour, though. We're kind of screwed. Or even more recently than that, the Texan guy doing the rewind stuff all the time. People seem to like that. <laughs> yeah, but that was, like, a... And that and it was a very bite-sized thing, too. It was just really easy to kind of pick up and watch, and it's done immediately. Right. Yeah, exactly. And then there's the whole tricky part with, um, I mean, we talked about this, and, uh, of the whole, like, you know, we don't necessarily want people to, like, like, spam other people's channels and things like that. Mm -hmm. You go out of your way not to mention them and things like that. Yeah. And you, you don't want I don't want to, like, hide from the other person either. 
Because, again, people do have positive reactions to Rat Supre, you know? Right. And, like, uh, and typically they get, like, their own, like, views and subs with it, you know? Mm-hmm. So, like, and they're all, and, you know, people on YouTube are always fucking happy with that. Just that number of shit, so. <laughs> right. Right, so, you know, it's... It, I think the viewers, too, have gotten wind of that a little bit. I think on, so. I think it was the recent Brutal Mario video we did. I think there was some conversation about, hey, where's this guy's channel? And, you know, people voting down that, got, disliking the comment and saying, no, no, don't, don't do that. That's, don't want to spam his channel or anything like that. We mentioned this a bunch. And by the way, to bring some positivity, what I do like about our fans in general is if they aren't happy with shit we're doing, probably like this stream. Um, no, I mean, you, you hear about it, right? Cause oh, yeah. if you look at other people's channels and shit, like, uh, and the big names, and I'm not even trying to call out anybody in particular, but it's like, you do see sometimes that voice of dissent come out and it just gets downvoted or flagged as spam or whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah, but, but if there's some legit, um... Right. The, the famous, the famous example is like the, the Bad Game Grumps episode. Yeah. Yeah, where they did, what was it, um, Naughty Bear, I think. And they really didn't pay attention to the game at all. And they just bullshitted about other stuff. And then because they didn't pay attention to the game, they couldn't do the basic tutorial stuff, like even though it had just told them. So, right. and that was like, we had gotten, our inbox got flooded with, oh, you gotta RP this Game Grumps video, whatever. And I saw people in their own YouTube comments were like, one guy was like, look, I like the Game Grumps, I just hate this episode, I don't want to see any more like it. And somebody else would be like, shut the fuck up, like, if you're a fan of them, you should be, you should be happy with everything they do. Have you ever heard of loyalty, son? Right. And uh, Blind, blind, <laughs> blind loyalty. Right. And not them, mind you, but I am saying I do think too, like a lot of the uh, a lot of the, the YouTube let's play people who get big kind of exploit that in a way. Like they kinda want their fans to be that uh, vociferous about it because then you know, they well, always come back. It's easy to make content too. Yeah, absolutely. It's like you built your cult of personality and bang, you're set. So just up. whatever you do, you're good. Absolutely. You know? Well, that was, like, a thing that annoyed me I saw recently, um, and I guess to be fair to this guy, it might have been the one particular thing, but, uh, the Red Brad had a, an annotation. I was looking for Saints Row 4 Let's Plays, because a lot of people got review copies of the game, and there was an embargo that said you could only play up to a certain part. So I noticed, of course, a bunch of people, before the game came out, started their Let's Play already and just ended it right before that part, you know? Right. But uh, Red Brad's was the first one on the search results, and I clicked on it, and there was an annotation that said, if you get this up to 30k likes, I promise I will give 110%. And I was like, that is just, like, nakedly disdainful of his fans, where it's like... Well, it puts responsibility on them, where... <laughs> but responsibility... Are you building any responsibility on them? But for what, though? Like Exactly, if you, if you, yeah. If you get this up to 3K, I'm going to try really hard. Like, that... Wow! I mean, I'll put like, effort if you say I'm awesome. <laughs> That's like... I know, but it's like... like he, you really are, if you take it one logical step, saying you are outwardly telling your own fans, I'm not really trying, but if you add likes to this, then I'll try hard. You know? And it's like this very... But um, it's up to you. And it's, it's a very, again, like, transparent thing where it's like, the likes bump up your friggin' YouTube ranking, you know, so that you come up first on the search result, you know? And, and he was already up to 40k likes. And what's kind of funny, by the way, is his later, um, Saints Row 4 videos, they actually got shorter. <laughs> um, but the reason I say I want to be fair to him is, apparently he does this on every one of his videos, uh, or every one of his series, you know? And, he, oh, yeah. and, and I don't like it personally, um, you know? But I guess it works, you know? Does it? I mean, he has a lot of likes. <clears throat> Excuse me. He has a lot of likes, you know? The subscribe... I think the asking for sub subscribers thing at the end of your video, that I think absolutely works. I even have a long-winded theory on it, if you'd like to hear that. Does that have something to do with the whole subscribers versus views ratio? Um, that'll get... I, that I can... That ties in at the end, but... Um, oh, okay. No, this is, an, this is an experiment I have not conducted yet. Um, well, first of all, yes, I think uh, if if you do ask for subscribers, you will get them. Um, but I think if you ask at the end, you'll get more than if you asked at the beginning. Well, because at the end, they've presumably watched a video. If they watch to the end, then they'll probably have liked or have enjoyed themselves. Right. They're or, probably in a more positive state of mind and are willing to do anything you want. It's actually, there's like a new kind of theory in advertising about it. Cause, yeah? Uh, yeah, because um, 
Do the ads, you know, you have a, uh, what is it, uh, pre-roll, mid-roll, post-roll, where the ad appears? Yeah, I need to watch Mad Men again, but yeah. Right. So mid-roll pays the most, because you're, the viewers get interrupted in the middle of the video, and they can't watch the rest without seeing the commercial. That's how TV right. commercials work, more or less, right? Sure. Uh, and then the second of that, pre-rolls pay, because the advertiser thinks, like, well, the, the user's forced to watch the commercial if they're even going to watch the video, you know? Yeah, so that's your barrier to entry. Right. It doesn't pay as well because you don't know for sure, like, the viewer might get turned off by the ad and just go to a different video or something, you know. Whereas the mid-roll, they've at least watched half. And then you have the post-roll, which pays the least because I guess they figure people are just going to close out of the video once they're done watching it. Yeah, they're done, so yeah, exactly. But here's a new thing people are kind of, are kind of purporting is actually, in terms of advertisement, meaning you remember the product and you actually want to go out and buy it, post-roll might be the best. Because you have someone who is apparently invested enough in the video, and they might be in a positive frame of mind because they presumably like the video, therefore they actually like the advertised product better. They have more of a positive response to the ad, basically, you know? Okay. Okay. So, but if you notice, too, Let's Players on YouTube have, I think, inadvertently stumbled upon this, because when you do the, the ask for the like and subscribe at the end, you're more likely to get it because people, they watch your video, they're like... And you say to them, hey, it really helps me out. So they're like, yeah, sure, I'll click a button. Who cares, right? Okay. Okay, but here's where it gets into the view-subscribe ratio. It doesn't really work because I think a lot of people actually don't use a subscriber panel on YouTube. They'll click a button if you ask them to, but it's no skin off their back. You know what I mean? But if you uh, if you take a look at big – if you go to Social Blade, because Social Blade tracks people's like views and subscriber histories. you yeah, know, and also ranks them on both categories. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. Um, and you take the number of uh, views, the bigger, the big number, divide it by the number of subscribers. People who ask for subscribers tend to have way lower ratios than people who don't, right? So, like, um, all right, so you do it for Red Supre. You get about, you get a number of about five hundred, which more or less means um, if you discount non-subscribers, of course, you all well, subscriber watches about five hundred views, you know. Whereas you take another person who has, let's say, in the millions of subscribers, they get a number like 100, which says, oh, okay, well, their subscribers only watch 100 views. And the thing is, you might say to that, well, wait, you're not accounting for the people who don't subscribe at all but still watch, which it kind of, I think, supports my point because you get the views anyway. You know what I mean? Subscriber or not. Like, if you get a lot of views from your channel, you're getting some from your subscribers, but you're getting it probably from people who don't even use your subscriber panel anyway. You know what I mean? So what are they using instead? The recommended thing, or are they just typing in the name of your channel and finding or they, them? Or they even remember you, you know? Mm. Like, um, like if I, I mean, Psychedelic Eyeball, I know his name. I don't think I'm subscribed to him on YouTube, because I don't use the subscription thing on YouTube. I don't either. I don't think, and I don't think we're really alone on that. I think some people do. And I think the other thing to remember, too, is that the people who are likely to use the subscriber panel are quote-unquote savvier about YouTube, also more likely to have ad block. True. So I, basically, subscriber, and I'm not trying to say this for sour grapes or anything like that, but it is kind of a meaningless number. It's, I guess, a general idea of how popular a channel is. But there's like also channels we've looked at where they have like a consistently higher subscriber ratio than others, but a way lower view number. I noticed that about Mega Jose, because I listened to that podcast, and he'd hit 10,000 recently, so I was interested and thought I'd check out his channel, mm -hmm. see what he was all about. But despite the, the uh, high subscriber number, his videos all have 100, 200 views each. You know, it's weird, too. And, uh, and, I, and a nice guy, I'm not trying to diss him, Nintendo Capri Sun have, like, a really high subscri uh, subscriber list where he's gaining, like, over 100 a day, but his view count kind of was kind of low. And I think, I mean, part of that, I think, too, is that I think the Runaway Guys videos are what people watch, and then you, there's probably some call-out, like, by the way, there's a Chugga Conroy, Proton John, and Nintendo Yeah, you have our own channels, but then they subscribe, but then don't ever actually bother seeing what they have on there. Maybe. Right. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I think, yeah, and I think the thing is, too, if you subscribe to, too, like, a lot of people, then obviously your, your uh, subscriber feed is getting full of videos, you know what I mean? No. Oh. Yeah. YouTube Economics. I don't know if any of this is true, though, because... Let's take a commercial break. All right. <laughs> um, Who are we sponsored by? <laughs> we are sponsored by GameZone in Hillsdale, New Jersey. <laughs> I love that place. It's great. Dollar a day. No, Dollar we're, a day. We're not really... Uh, is that where you got Max Payne 3 from? Yes. A lot of people, by the way, are uh, are uh, talking about um, uh, Mega Jose in the chat. 
So what do you guys want? Do you want to talk about him, or do you want to talk about Max Payne? Or something else entirely? What do you want, chat? Oh, it's a choose-your-own-adventure podcast. I it, love it. It is. Absolutely. Yeah, okay. So let's bring him on. No, he's not here. All right. Looks like a lot of things, but I'm seeing I'm seeing Mega Jose as things go. All right. So you listened to that podcast, huh? I did. What did I you... didn't think other billion sea-like people existed out there in the Let's Play world. There you go. But I was proven wrong. So, yeah. So the plan was to do something like yours, you know. Um, there was a last-minute technical issue, and Terry didn't have to stream for me. So I was technically a guest on her stream, but um, good. I, uh, I gave her my stream key so she could, you know, it was technically for my channel, blah, blah, blah. So he was the first person in email, and his, he had a couple of questions, which I thought were like, yeah, I could make a conversation out of this. Why not, you know? And yeah. he jumps in with his name, his YouTube channel, a couple people he's following, and I'm like, oh, he's here to show, you know? I was immediately yeah. like, all right, this is a disaster. And then he was like... Another person using Retsupray to launch their careers. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yet another. Yet another. St stepping on our heads again. Keeps no. happening. <laughs> but when he started talking, my first thought was, uh, I'm getting trolled here. But then as he kept going, I'm like, maybe I'm not, you know? So then it, it was like this sort of awkward balance where it's like, what do you do? Do you, like, string this guy along or do you, like, engage, yeah. you know... The time I decided to listen to that podcast, I decided to go on a jog during yeah. lunch one day. I was uh -huh. like, oh, I'll listen to the podcast that I missed that you guys did. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking kind of the same thing while it was playing, but then the thing that slayed me, and I had to stop and gasp for breath for a while, was when he said that line about, you brought up the great Gatsby, <laughs> and he, without missing a beat, said, I never saw that movie. Well, the, be the best is, um, when he was telling that whole thing about Sonic Advance 2, I actually, because there was a lot, there were a lot of times in there I'm, like, trying to not laugh or whatever, because I don't want to laugh right in his face, you know? But a couple times I did. But, um, but I, I actually was mouthing, Great Gatsby, Great Gatsby, because I wanted to be able to tell that joke without, la or you know what I mean, without laughing. Yeah. Uh -huh. And then I said that, and then he came out with that. I think I laughed there because I couldn't help it. It was like, he's, he's, he's so nice, though. He's like, he really is like Billy MC, and he doesn't hate anybody. Or it actually, I have a theory he kind of does, but um, maybe, maybe no, uh, yeah, that was. I think my favorite thing was when Cherry Doom was talking about Pokebound, and he was like, "Ooh!" And then that <laughs> right. you, if if you listen to that podcast about fifty four, and at fifty four, you can hear me kind of go like, because I like I needed something to like not just you know. Um, <laughs> that said, I had him on a, I had him on a, my one of my streams recently when I was playing Cave Story. Yeah, he he brings this very positive energy with him. Yeah, it's I, th I, th I think some people may not like him, and I can kind of see why, but at the same time, he has... I don't know what it is. He has this moxie or something. He has, He's more controversial, and I think cause part, of yeah. the re part of the reason is some people don't like him because they just don't like his personality type. Some people don't like him because they feel like he's a patsy. You know yeah, what I mean? Like he's just kind of... Trying to leech some attention. No, no, no. That people over to his channel. You? No, that I'm like completely stringing him along, and everyone. Like, oh, that he. Oh, that like, he's everyone, like, Look at this. You're making him. You're making him play the fool. Yeah, like look at this fucking asshole. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Whereas, like, I don't personally feel that way. Like when I first started talking on the podcast, like maybe a little bit, yeah, because like you know when he's like, oh, you cry at video games. Like what? What video games make you cry? Although I was genuinely interested to hear, and I but I didn't know Final Fantasy VII had to be one. Now though, I really just like I I I'm happy with him. Like I think he's the new Billy MC, and I'm like happy to bring him on board and talk about whatever. Mm. That said, if he talks about crying about video games, I am gonna have to explore it. You know what I mean? But <laughs> sure, yeah. But I mean, he was happy to be on there. He's happy to listen back and listen to this. So you know, I mean, I don't know. He's controversial, you know. But he has a very weird thing too, where he seems like he likes to take control of the conversation. Which is fine by me, frankly, but, uh, you know. He seems okay with talking about things that he clearly doesn't seem to know a whole lot about. I think Cherry Doom mentioned that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, it's, oh yeah, he'll, uh, he'll talk about, like, yeah, like, the, he was big on the 2DS, 3DS kind of thing, you know? Yeah. Maybe we should talk about that. Oh yeah, we should. Hmm. Before that, by the way, though, I think we have pretty much exhausted Billy MC, I'm sad to say. I agree, yeah. I kind of realized that around the time when he... He made comments in a video saying that he kind of felt like our fans were 
kind of making him play the fool in a way by commenting on his videos, kind of making him into a punchline more than, say, a person. Well, he was like, excuse me, well, he was like, you know, well, yeah. I, I, I want to be, he's like, I'm not a, like a little kid. I'm kind of a, I'm, I'm like a man or whatever, you know what I mean? Sure, and sure. I think the thing is that, in all honesty, I guess the way I felt like it is there, this whole YouTube internet thing, or even Let's Play and Something Awful, is kind of divorced from who you, like, actually are and act like in real life, you know? I'm sure, Bill, I mean, you, there's some truth to it, of course, and, like, but, I, I mean, for Billy, I'm like, I don't, I didn't think it would have mattered to him so much if people think he's, like, kind of the plucky kid who, like, really wants to beat that video game and show YouTube, you know? But he can always yeah. just walk away and have a normal life, but... You know, I guess if it really is bothering him on some level, then it's like, okay, that's fine. Yeah. You know, no problem. I can, I can, I can kind of see how, you know, he wants to take his channel in a certain direction, and he wants his subscriber base to be able to follow him with that. I hear you. So if that kind of gets in the way, I can, I can see why you would want to speak out about it, and I think that's fair. No, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, and hey, yeah, not, I mean, yeah, nothing against him, sure. If that's how, yeah. if that's how he feels, that's how he feels, you know? Yeah. It's a shame, I mean, I would have, I would like to have talked to him once. Besides, like, YouTube PM, you know what I mean? But, uh... Yeah, I wish we could have gotten him in on that Metroid Prime episode. Me but too. It just didn't happen. It's just, you know... Schedules. Right. But let's be honest here, I think Mega Jose ended up being uh, what we wanted the Billy MC uh, yeah. video of whatever to be. You know what I mean? Because mm. Billy either would have been that or just kind of, like, awkward and underwhelming, you know? Right. So Jose's where it's at. And, you know, honestly, and again, it's controversial. Um, I got a lot of positive feedback to the stream when i posted the stream on youtube i got a lot of negative feedback so i don't know where we're going with it but um you know well, no matter what happens i i hope uh i hope he gets that 20k sub he wants so bad yeah. even so though is the negative matter. feedback because people just don't like him or because they think you're trying to make a fool out of him they think i'm making trying make, they're trying to make um, i'm trying to make a fool out of him mm -hmm. i just i mean i i felt like he was like you know what it reminded me of like on like howard stern or opie and anthony where you have, like, that, like, kind of regular caller who's, like, kind of weird or whatever, but he's, like, one of the regular call You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not, like, crackhead Sometimes Bob, you just but... <laughs> want to learn about what makes people tick. Well, I mean, he's, he's funny in his own way, yeah. And I, yeah. And, and you do laugh at how awkward it gets or whatever, but, like, I, I don't know. Maybe I'm crazy here. I don't, I don't feel particularly exploitative when I do it, you know? I don't know. Maybe I am. Maybe I'm you a terrible... monster. I'm a terrible person, and I'm just... Absolutely. Wait till I make you the fool on this podcast. Oh no! But I knew he was gonna cry at Final Fantasy VII. I mean that that just that's like the gimme. You know what I mean? That, that's it, like, that's like splitting aces. It's like splitting aces. It's the bet you have to take. Right. <laughs> so how about that 2DS? <laughs> I don't. I don't particularly like. That. Here's my question. Yeah. Who is it for? Well, it's it's fifty dollars less. Okay. So it's technically a lower price point. I I I just prefer the clamshell for the the DS kind of thing. You know what I mean? Like apparently the chat is saying it's specifically made for kids. All right, I guess. Where are the kids gonna store that thing? But like, have you seen what it looks like? Yeah, but how is the clamshell design not for kids? Well, I I do get the 3DS is sleeker, I suppose. Well, well, can't you... I mean, the 3D, you can just turn it off, right? Yeah. No, 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 I mean the design of the actual unit. Oh, okay. Do you have a 3DS? No. It's it's much sleeker. I have the tank-style DS, um, and my nieces had the, the more streamlined DS, you know? Um, the, the 3DS, though, it seems more like a... It does seem like more of, of a sleeker device. Like, it's something relatively for adults, you know? It's not. It's kind of takes like a like a page from iPhone a bit, you know, where it's like kind of glossy. I shouldn't really say iPhone. It's not and iPhone. it's a phone. And also. it's a phone, right? No, you know what I mean, though. Nintendo like, self service. It's it, or I should say it. It does take like a like a little thing out of a smartphone page. It looks like a little tiny bit like that, you know. I guess it's it's tough to explain exactly. Like just the way it lights up and certain like the way the power indicator is, the way you know it just. It hits me like that. So I, I kind of get saying the flat version with no hinge like that is for kids. You know? What? Because it doesn't break as easily? <laughs> I guess so. Okay. Mine never really broke, honestly. Neither my tank shell nor my 3DS ever broke, honestly. But then again, I don't play the 3DS a whole lot anymore. Right. 
Because I'm I'm busy with other shit. Like this podcast. Exactly. People are asking, don't some games require 3D? I don't know if they do, honestly. Well, if it's a Switch, you turn it on and off. Why would they require it? Yeah, I can't think of any puzzles you'd want to you'd have to solve with the 3D or anything like that, you know, because it's it, it really is just uh, it's just a 3D the 3D engine, as far as I know. You know what I mean? Like the games are still in the regular polygon type of engine. Right. I mean, you, you know, can still see them just fine in 2D as you would in 3D. Yeah, they're not programmed any differently, really. It's just that like the stere- it's just using the stereoscopy to just with the 3D. It's like you're in that game world. Uh, someone's saying in th- in Super Mario Land 3D, it's uh. 3D Mario Land does benefit with the 3D, or the jumping is easier. Okay, so mechanically, it's convenient? I guess so, but it's it's not true 3D. Like, you can't actually bend your head or tilt the device, unless I'm wrong, to see, like, around things. You know what I mean? It's like, all it's really doing is the trick-your-eye effect, kind of. But I guess, Well, that's I- the Nintendo 4DS, I think. Oh. We can do that, yeah. <laughs> I guess, I mean, I get the whole, like, you have a little better depth perception for things, but I still don't... Some puzzles require 3D. I really don't remember them. All right, I'll trust Chad on that. Uh, maybe, yeah, I guess there were some puzzles that you needed the depth for. I just don't remember them, honestly. Oh, shadows, maybe. Who knows? Anyway. So who I shouldn't get either one. No. Is what I'm hearing. <laughs> no, unless you want Virtue's Last Reward. But other than that. I bet lots of kids will play Pokemon on it. That's true. Yeah? Yeah. I, uh, I... <laughs> I learned a bit about Pokemon from our uh, from our from your uh, pot live podcast. Oh yes, we had the Pokemon expert come on. That's right. That's right, Billy. Um, so, <laughs> no. I, so, which Pokemon game are you going to start with? Oh, I'm not playing them. Okay. Well, me neither. Okay. Um, I love egging guests on. <laughs> well, you know, I'll follow uh, up with you on that. You know, uh, to to clarify one thing, I'm sure the Pokemon games are fine. You know. Sure. Uh, it has its audience. And the things he was talking about sounded like they could be interesting, the whole four-player battle thing, all that stuff, you know? Um, Pokemon LPs, though, I've just... I have never had a good experience with in the in the years I've done Let's Play. And been in Let's Play. Yeah. Um, there are a couple of exceptions. I'll, be, I'll give you a hint. If you ask me, and just pitch me your idea, and whatever, I, I like, 90% of the time, so I try the same cast, we'll go for it. You know what all I right, mean? Well, here's my idea for a Pokemon LP. No. All right, go ahead with it. YouTube. There you are. Yeah. Well, yeah. But then, yeah, and you look at the YouTube Let's Play, you know, and... Well, like, that, uh, the guy you had on said mentioned, like, Chucker Conroy and how he does it and stuff like that, which right. I think at the very least said is, like, yeah, that's different enough, that's high enough effort and stuff, you know what I mean? But it's generally, like, the big problem is, uh, with the exception of, I think, the newer generation games, they all start exactly the same. It's like... You have your uh, older relative, he's a Pokemon professor or whatever, he has a lab scientist, I don't know. He's like... So does he have a PhD in Pokemon? I guess he must. He's like, what's your name, kid? Okay, what Pokemon you want? Oh, you have that childhood rival, what's his name? Or whatever. Okay, anyway, bye. Do you think there are kids growing up who say they want to study Pokemon in college? (laughs) I'm sure there are. I'm sure there's no, like, market for it yet, but... I can't wait to start my summer in- internship at the gym and learn how to do Pokemon. <laughs> it seems... Sometimes Pokemon seems a little insidious to me. You know? Yeah. Like, the whole, like... Uh, I guess it doesn't really... The game itself, from what I understand from that podcast, too, it doesn't actually center itself around exhaustive collection. You know? Mm-hmm. But I feel like if Zynga, let's say, had had the Pokemon IP... Like, you'd be fucked. It'd be like... bankrupt. Yes. It would be like, hey, you can't go to that next gym unless you've collected 60 Pokemon, which uh, you can either do while watching ads, and it'll take you about three months. Have you told your friends about Pokemon? Yeah, basically. Or like that Candy Crush bullshit, where it's like, you want to catch the next ten Pokemon? Well, either three of your friends got to help you on Facebook, or uh, you could pony up some dough, you know? Ah. So you have to give Nintendo some credit there, where they're just like, Here's a game you can play for, like, years on end, I suppose, you know? <laughs> and all, all we got was 60 bucks out of the whole stupid thing, you know? Or 40 or however much game mm. we, you know? Whereas, like, you know, I, I think there are probably a hell of a lot more other uh, other companies who would have been like, we have got to milk everything out of this, you know? Which <laughs> sucks for Nintendo. That's the Pokemon logo, I think. Well, but they, but you have to wonder if Nintendo would be in a better, like, position if they actually had done some of that shit. 
Maybe. Imagine if, uh, imagine if somebody from Nintendo were listening to this podcast, like, that is it. We could have been Farmville. <laughs> Do you really want to be Farmville, though? Well. Actually, uh, you know what it is? I bet you anything Zynga did have a Pokemon ripoff, because, you, you know the whole controversy with them, where, like, Farmville's not actually the first game like that? Oh, it's not? No, there is another game called something like well, Farm City or some shit, that I, it did come out first. Farm Simulator? Yeah. If if you look at like Zynga got in, is in a lawsuit with EA, um, because well they they have like this uh, they have, EA has this Facebook game called The Sims Social, and Zynga has their own version called like Cityville or something. <laughs> and EA, if you it's a really funny lawsuit to read because they really rip the fuck out of The Sims Social off, <laughs> like. The EA lawsuit at one point overlays the graphics from the Sims Social onto the Zynga game, and they're like, if you look, even the proportions of their artwork are exactly the same as ours. <laughs> like, it's, yeah, it's like down, and then there's the whole controversy with, like, Tiny Tower and uh, Pacific Heights, I think it's called. Like, did you ever see Tiny Tower on the iPhone and Android? I played Tiny Tower for a little while, yeah. Yeah, you know, Zynga has their own version of it. And then, like... No Tiny Towerville? Yeah, it's, or it's like... <laughs> It's like City Heights or something like that, and it's like the same fucking game. It's like they have their own cartoony art style, but it like, and then Nimblebit, the company made Tiny Tower, put out a press release like, "Dear Zyga, thank you very much for being inspired by us to make your own game." And they showed like side by side pictures where it really was the same fucking game, just with like different art assets, you know. And like, yeah, so uh, even Farmville, the big one, that that was not actually an original idea, apparently. So. That's 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 uh that's making the video games for you. Casual gaming's gotten not so casual. I'll say not so cash. Is that how the not, kids say yeah, it? Excuse me, cash gaming. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> I've been I've been trying to keep an eye now on video game business stuff just to make my MBA start to go better. You know, start to go better. That wow. seems like a way to make it go worse. <laughs> it's interesting though. I mean, I got to write excuse a... me, professor, but how much do you know about Pokemon? <laughs> I got to write Can a. You marketing... train me. That's oh. That is true. They do train you. Um, <laughs> maybe though, I'll have to do one on YouTube. Who knows? Somebody was uh, finished a dissertation recently about Let's Play. Oh yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah. I hope he uh, lets he makes it public domain because I'd be interested in looking at it. I I want to not even to make fun of it. I'm not saying anything like that. But I, I'm from a genuine academic perspective, I'm interested to see what he has to say about it. Well, there was um there was that one paper, Super Rutgers RPG. And the, I think I'd heard of that. That was from a little while back. Uh, yeah, a couple of years back. The title kind of got to me, and yeah. I, uh, I got uh, all. Um, what happened was the person who wrote it also wrote an article on their website, where not in their their paper, but on their website they compared the four different types of let's plays they'd identified to the four Pokemon types. So you had like your grass type let's players and your like electric type let's players, which I was just like. Oh, you made that into like a let's play forum parody thing for a little while, didn't you? Yeah, and then people, and then, yeah, <laughs> there was some backlash over that, I guess. But, I remember like, that. Yeah. Well, it was it was that was ridiculous, but it was kind of silly. Yeah. yeah. Whatever. Um. I, I I didn't. I don't know. I mean, the original paper seemed all right then. After I'd like read the official original paper that didn't include the Pokemon comparison. You know, which isn't even like a Pokemon thing, but it's like, if, I don't know, I, I feel like if you're writing like a serious academic paper, like, I don't know, should be like an air of veneer, or no, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it should be kind of grounded, somewhat scholarly, somewhat, you know? Are you saying Pokemon's not scholarly? I guess I am. God. I guess that makes me racist. Have you heard Pokemon. of the Pokedex? What is more academic than that? Um, Poke University? Pokeclopedia? P.U. P.U. Yeah. Well, you know, it's 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 odd because someone like uh, when I was ta I was tweeting about the whole recent PewDiePie thing with Amnesia and like somebody was like, "Let's play a serious Gosh. business," and I was like thinking about, it, I was like, "Kind of it is now." It's like turning into that, yeah. It's a million dollar business for sure, you know. For and a couple people. No, I think like I mean aggregate. Like yeah, you're. Talking oh, you mean for like companies? Companies. No, I'm talking about if you take the aggregation of all the people doing it and making oh, revenue oh. off of it. Oh, yeah, yeah sure. Absolutely. absolutely. Well, I mean, and that well, that's the funny thing because when Nintendo, um, when everyone got mad at Nintendo for the whole like uh, we're going to monetize videos using our footage kind of thing, right? Like nobody seemed to notice that's technically Google is actually the one 
everyone should turn the weird eye to, right? Yeah. Did you ever? I didn't know if you saw this, but they actually approached Notch with the same thing. They're like, if you want to, if you want us to monetize every Minecraft video out there and you get a cut of it, let us know. And he was like, I'm really tempted to do that. Yeah. Yeah, he was thinking about it, and yeah. you blame him. No, I mean, that's... that's. Would not... you like free money? I know. And that's, for Minecraft, that is a shitload to turn down. You know? Uh, I mean, that's, that's... That is at least 90% of YouTube videos now. Right. But to be fair, he's probably doing pretty well right now, just off Minecraft in general, you know? Oh, sure. Yeah, and there probably is some negative PR that would happen if he did that, but it's kind of hard to argue with him, frankly, you know? Again, free money. Right. But that's the thing, right? And here's the trick, though, if you're Google, right? So let's say you don't do that, and you just let people play the Nintendo games and monetize them on their own, you know? If right. that if your users decide they're just doing it for fun and they don't want to turn off ads, that's money you're not making, right? But if you go with Nintendo and say, we can monetize everything for you, now you're making all that half. You know what I mean? Nintendo kind of backed off from that, didn't they? They did, yeah. They were getting yeah. kind of bad PR from it. Yeah, oh, they didn't yeah. actually, like, say anything about it. They were just kind of quietly stopped doing it. Yeah, apparently they took away... The original person who complained, what was it, Zach Scott, I think? Uh, that sounds familiar, yeah. yeah. With that eloquently worded complaint. Yeah, exactly. They they yeah. basically took away the claim on him, more or less. And then, I think, yeah, there was no official statement. I think it's one of those things where probably, like, we got a lot of negative flack. Let's re reserve the right to do it. We'll do it in certain instances. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it's and it's more complex, you know, to to this, than just saying like, well, Google's kind of an asshole too here because you do have to like, uh, you do have to give Google some credit here. I mean, they're doing all the heavy lifting in terms of like they're hosting it, they're making it searchable, like that. Those are things are not trivial things to do, you know. Right. Sure. Cause I remember because well, like back in the day with LP Archive, like we had to we we tried some self hosting solutions. I think Chip and Ironicus tried self hosting at one point too, and it's just. Yeah, it quickly didn't work out. It's very expensive bandwidth cost. You know? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. We even hosted our podcast on a generous Mr. Swoon's server for a little while, and even that quickly didn't work. Yeah. Because the server couldn't take it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and we had, like, bandwidth considerations on uh, Lipson, you know, mm -hmm. that we had to pay yeah. for. So. Yeah. And you're talking about, like, you know, fucking yutabytes of video here. You know, like, incredibly high numbers, that, you know. And that people upload, like, just gigs and gigs and gigs of every fucking day, you know? Second, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's not the same when Google's like, how much profit can we make off of it? It's not necessarily, I don't know how much of it is just their margins and shit like that, or how much is like, we gotta actually even try to get deep into the black here, you know what I mean? If they are even in the black. I'm not even sure if YouTube is help is profitable for Google. I mean... I have they, no idea. Well, they bought it for $2 billion, you know? Like, and I'm sure it didn't make $2 billion the first couple of years. And I'm sure that they didn't plan for it to make that. Like, I'm sure it was going to be in the red for, like, a while and slowly build up and then... Pre-Let's Play? I don't think so. <laughs> well, that's the thing, right? I mean, it's like, uh, it's one of those things where they had enough money they could survive that until it became, like, a longer-term investment kind of deal. Um, yeah. And then, but then, yeah, like, now 40... I think it, it really is, like, 47% of content on YouTube is gaming content, you know? Is that true? Uh, I read it somewhere. I don't think it's... I don't know. I would think at least 70% is cats. <laughs> Actually, like, I, I think 43% of it is Dark Side Phil videos. Okay. <laughs> you know, but... 43% um, of the 47% of the gaming videos? <laughs> no, I mean 43% of YouTube. Oh, and then yeah. the other He doesn't make gaming videos, that's right. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> he makes garbage videos. <laughs> oh, boy. And then the other 4% is... It's mm. all the other Let's Plays. Uh, yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a complex system. More or less. It is. A mm -hmm. business, no less. It is. It absolutely is. And they've really, uh, yeah. They've, they've, they're really liking this Let's Play thing for them, because everybody fucking likes to run ads on it. Oh, did you see the new thing on Twitter, too? Like, don't use Adblock. It's the new Let's Play, like, Twitter hashtag thing. Oh, yeah, Adblock's trying to raise awareness of their service. Adblock was having, was running ads using Adblock for Adblock. <laughs> wanting to spread awareness of, and I think that caught people's attention. Like, no, my livelihood. Well, you know what's ridiculous? Because uh, Adblock Plus, I think, has the features you'd want it in it, where you say, "I want to whitelist certain ad things." I mean, I don't use any Adblock kind of thing, just because, like, you use a Mac. Well, no, it'll it'll come out for Mac in like 2020, probably. 
It's pro- uh. yeah. Don't you know worry. What? Yeah, you'll have it. You have it. no idea what you're talking about, but okay. That's um, <laughs> <laughs> well, whatever. Anyway, well, by the way, Cherry Doom is really fucking down on Mac. Cherry Doom's down on everything. But I mean, like, really down. On, like, even more than like Proteus was, where he's like, "Oh, Mac, fuck that." Well, I saw you trying to test your Bioshock stream using Mac stuff. Uh-huh. And that was a, it was a process you had going for there. To be honest, though, well, I was kind of surprised on that one, because it shouldn't have been too much CPU, I would have thought, for the capture card, because I wasn't actually capturing, you know? Like, I guess the only thing I can think of is, is just grabbing memory frames and putting them up, you know? You know, you can get a reasonably powerful PC for not very much money. I, I can't have a desktop. Why? Why can you not have one? Okay, well, cause for one thing, I'm you here... You live in a home. But I'm here in my basement right now to do, like, sound stuff, right? Because that's, right. like, the... I get the least, like, noise in here, you know? And that way my wife can watch TV upstairs and all that, right? Yeah, and a PC would just blow a sonic boom that would destroy your house. No, but, like, if I had my PC in my basement then, if I ever wanted to come up and work, like, uh, program stuff and kind of have TV on in the background, or just, like, even hang out with her and surf the internet, you know? Like... So, so you need the portability. Oh, yeah. Well, like, that's okay. the thing, because she made a joke, like, like, oh, I'm so busy, I'm going everywhere, and I'm thinking, it's kind of funny, because I was thinking, like, yeah, like, I have a, I mean, I go to work, you know, I have a work laptop I bring with me, but I have my, like, play one for the bus, too, so I can do, like, audio stuff for Reddit Prey on the way there, on the way home, you know? Like, it, it's, it really is, like, a thing, like, some people just, desktop just doesn't work for you, you know? Have you heard of laptops? PC laptops? Yeah, but then you don't save that much money. You no, but but I mean, then you really need a desktop. Look, I'll help you out here. I'll help. I'll help your PC argument. Okay. Gaming is kind of eh on Mac, obviously, right? <laughs> kinda. Yeah, kinda. Kinda. I mean, I'm I'm a console gamer, so for me, it's like, all right, I mi- I miss out on a few things. Oh my god, the chat exploded at you saying that. What? That could be. Oh god. Not really. I know. No, it's true though, and I've seen I've seen the high end PC games, and I know I'm missing out on a lot. You know, the thing is, though, too, I used to be a PC gamer when I was younger, and I kind of hated having to just upgrade my machine constantly. You know, like, I, I feel like then, like, a new hot game would come out, and it's like, oh, I meet the minimum requirements, good, and you'd buy it, and, like, minimum requirements means, like, nah, you can't really run this, you know? Okay. So, I, I got kind of sick of it after a while, so it was just, like, fine. And I still use PC, mind you, you know, and then... And then I became an iPhone developer, and it was around the same time that I, my Vista box was, like, completely just shitting the bed. So I'm like, yeah, fuck it, I'm, I'm done here. And by the way, I gotta be frank with you, some of those Windows 7 viruses, that, and I know you're on 8, and 8's supposed to be awesome, whatever, um, are fucking nasty. The ransomware shit? Ransomware shit? You haven't heard of this? Like, the, the viruses that, like, lock you out of your PC and, like, ask you to pay them to take it off? Uh, well, I don't download... Garbage, so no. I guess that's a thing, but, like, I, two people I know have got them. There's one called Ice, which takes over Maybe your... you tell them to ease up on the porn or something? I... That's a touchy subject. You know, <laughs> like... Because, like, the Ice one is fucking sick. It takes over your webcam. It starts to take a picture of you. I'm not even joking. It really did this. And it, like, locks you out of your PC, and it says that you've been downloading either illegal files or child porn or something... And if you send 300 bucks here, they won't send your information to, like, Department of Justice or some shit like that. I, you can look this up. It's like, to- like, cause when I first heard about it, I'm like, really? And then you look at it I'm like, wow, that is fucked up. You know? So that's your Mac argument. Not really, but I'm just saying, that's like why when I'm, I don't know. I mean, that is fucked up. Okay. Yeah. I mean, no, Windows 7, I understand Windows 7 is supposed to be actually really good. You know? It is good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I, I got burned really bad on Vista, like really mm. bad to the point where I'm like, That's this fair. is awful. And not just like, Hey, it's hard to use this computer. It's like, I lost about a month of police knots work just due to windows Vista. Wow. Like it was, it, it was really that big. Like, that's what like, too, even when Proteus, who was diehard and arguing with me in Metroid Prime, like, I'm like, what do you develop on? He's like, okay, actually I got to develop on Linux. It's like, yeah, it's like, unless you're developing for windows or or Java, or Blue Fair, and nowadays Ruby, too. But, like, it's pretty tough, actually, to make that all work, you know? That having been said, by the way, Let's Play on Mac kind of sucks. <laughs> like, trying to do all that, that, this is, like, a fucking struggle. Honestly. I mean, the big problem is, too, all video and audio stuff, not all, 
A lot of video and audio stuff funnels through QuickTime because the way Mac does, Apple does everything is they kind of lock shit down and they want you to use their architecture for stuff. So it's technically slower than it has to be. Hmm. The, the good news of that is, though, it's built on Unix, so if there's anything built for Linux or, or, or Solaris or anything like that and you're kind of tech savvy, you can build it and, you know what I mean? Like, there's FFmpeg stuff, you know? But then, it, but then again, all the easy stuff built for PC because everyone likes PC, so you're kind of boned there, too, you know? Okay. I don't know. So you watch a lot of porn on the Mac, then? I do. Tons. Yeah. I don't know. It's just, that's no the luxury you have. You One know. time I found an EXE on there. I'm like, nice try, Mr. Russian Virus, and I know it's Russian. Oh, oh I thought you were going to launch into a haunted porn story. <laughs> <laughs> no, I unfortunately have too many of those, and they actually did happen. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's pretty much all your Mac is now, is haunted pornography. I know, like, chat's probably exploding, by the way, about, like, Mac is the worst thing ever, what the fuck's the matter with you, but... When he, I mean, I I am an iPhone developer, and you can't you cannot do that on PC. Same with, by the way, Windows Phone. You can't do that on Mac. Hmm. It, you know. So you go to Android, and you can do it on either, but then no one buys your apps, and you're fucked. Oh, that's a whole other argument. By the way, you should absolutely develop for Windows Phone. They are fucking desperate. Like, <laughs> I'm not serious. Microsoft pays really? you. Yeah, they're like nuts. Not, I mean, not, I mean, they're, they're, they're really trying to get a foothold in that market, so they're... They'll do things like, we'll help you market this. You know, Apple's kind of like, you're like, oh, yeah, yeah, we're not helping you out. We're doing just fine. You know, you can beg us. We have our stupid app review cut process, and maybe we'll reject you if you feel like it, but probably not, you know? I don't know one person who has Windows Phone. Um, I know a couple, and the people who do have it are pretty gung-ho about it. I watched uh, I watched the latest season of Burn Notice, rec- Burn Notice recently, and yeah. Patton Oswalt was a character on that, uh-huh. and there were some very obvious advertisement about product placement for windows phones Mm -hmm. because you know let me bring up my hacker software and he has clearly a windows 8 phone and hits a button and hits an app for his hacking application and it comes up (laughs) well you know i i gotta get i think microsoft's problem i'm kind of glad bomber stepping down is with the exception of xbox stuff um they tend to be pretty late to the party lately like you know windows phone i think windows phone would have done very well because there are a lot of people who wanted an iphone uh Alternative, but then it's like, well, you had Android for a long time, you know. Mm-hmm. Then meanwhile, BlackBerry is just like, well, we're fucked. Who cares? Yeah. What's a BlackBerry? Slow leaf. I I bet you yeah, there's people listening to this podcast who actually maybe don't know. Mm. Um, yeah. That Let me like... look it up on my Palm Pilot. <laughs> I think I had one of those. Oh, I had a yeah. I've it's... been watching West Wing and hearing Palm Pilot references, and it's kind of disconcerting. <laughs> I've been watching Breaking Bad. Oh. oh, I conducted an uh, impromptu social experiment without even trying. What'd you do? I took a clip from Breaking Bad, and apparent, and because uh, I, ha- I was, I, I had this idea because there is a big scene in the not the latest episodes tonight, but the one the previous week. There's a big scene, and it just hit me like, oh, you should put another clip in there, so it's like the characters are reacting to that kind of all of the Mad Men thing we did a while back, you know? Sure. Yeah. And no, there won't be any spoilers for people who are scared. Yeah, I'm not, don't worry about that. I'm not going to talk about it, cause, but whatever. But at any rate, uh, someone beat me to it with the Miley Cyrus thing, which I got to be, you know, the Miley Cyrus, the VMAs, the twerking bullshit, which is not even, I'm not, I'm not even just saying this just because I got beaten to the punch, but it's like, it doesn't quite fit, you know? But um, I did it. I did one where this this girl on YouTube named uh, Jerk It Jenny. Um, is Twerk her, It Jenny? Jerk It Jenny. Oh, well, that's disappointing. Yeah, she's she's reviewing a um, a hentai doujinshi um, about a mother and a son who have sex, um, and she's it's funny because during the review she's like, yeah, it's incest, so it's like, why am I reading this? But I'm totally reading it, and it is kind of hot the writing, and it's like, oh, this is really awful. Yeah, yeah. So I I did it to that one, and then I also did it to uh, a brony giving a presentation to his class on why you should watch My Little Pony. Was that the whole context for that video you found? I'm sorry. Oh, which wait, which video? The the Brony video. He was oh, giving sorry. a presentation about. I can't tell if he's like in high school or I, I think he might be in high school. But he's telling his whole class. I guess he had to give a presentation on My Little Pony, and he starts. Well, get, yeah, go ahead. What? Why? Well, because um. He, wait, what was the topic of the presentation? I, I don't know. I guess. Or the theme that the teacher gave for the students to present something about. I really have no idea. I really don't. What's on your mind? 
Give me a presentation. Uh, yeah. So, my little yeah. Right. I it, it it's it's very tough for me to empathize here. <laughs> you know, because honestly, I, I was trying to. I, I do like to try to sometimes just like for the play devil's advocate and think like, well, maybe what's going on? You know what I mean? Like, why would people like it? You know? Maybe his teacher is also a brony. Well, it's you know um. So I have, like, five nieces and nephews, so I've seen a lot of kid shows whenever I've been over, like, you know, their, like, houses and shit like that, you know what I mean? Sure. And, um, so, like, I'll give you an example. Do you, do you remember a show called The Powerpuff Girls? Yeah. Actually kind of a funny show, right? Because they do things where they sneak in jokes for adults and things like that, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, but, sure. and I was thinking, like, what the difference was between, and I haven't seen any My Little Pony, like, what the difference between is that and Powerpuff Girls, right? Except that... I realize Powerpuff Girls has a sort of ironic thing where it's like they're supposed to be cutesy girls, but they're kicking ass too, you know? Like, it's it's sort of like, it's ironic, you know, or, or you know, like, it's like sugar and spice and chemical X and shit like that. Where, But My Little Pony, as far as I understand it, is face value. Like, this is a cutesy show about fucking ponies prancing around and shit. Like, make no mistake who this is for. Right, yeah. Yeah. Or, like, Spongebob, Squarepants, so, like, they'll sneak in shit for adults, and there's random non-sequitur stuff, like, with David Hasselhoff and things like that, you know? Yeah. But as far as I know, My Little Pony really is just face value. The only, like, argument I've ever read for it is it's apparently a show where the ponies are f- flawed characters. Okay. Uh, I, I, I think you could probably stop You already stop me. lost me. No, they, yeah, I don't know. And it's, like, about how all our differences... This one pony went downhill and had to cook meth to pay the bills because he was dying of lung cancer. I don't... So I guess I can see how maybe if you're, I don't know, one of society's freaks, you can look... No, I I don't know. it's, it's, It's a very tough sell for me. During, yeah. in the video I made about My Little Pony, I've seen, I saw a couple people were like, I like the show, but I don't like this whole brony thing, you know? Which I think is, is acceptable, where I, you know, I, fair, I, fair. I don't understand it, but it's like, yeah, it's like, oh, it's actually a good show if you give it a chance. That's an easier sell to me then. This is such a good show. We need a name for ourselves to <laughs> proudly say. We need an identity. And I saw, My life is about this now. I saw another presentation I was considering using where the one, the guy giving the presentation, this was a college one, was like, you know, the bronies are comfortable enough in their masculinity that they can say they like this. It's like, uh, uh, I think you're mealy mouthing. Cause you also, by the way, had to mention that, you know? Yeah. So, I, I don't know. Maybe that's me being narrow minded. Because I certainly am. But. <laughs> I I don't I don't get it, but you know it's funny they get to watch then um, and see like who was more offended by the pony the My Little Pony thing than the the incest hentai doujinshi thing. So were there people defending both? Couple people with the incest thing were defending it. Um, the defense was mostly, well, hey, she's a consenting adult and like uh, or you know she's like uh, what's wrong with it more or less sex negative again you know. I didn't do this once, but... Right, it's... Which is, like... I'm not saying she's hurting anyone, but there is a time where this is fucking ridiculous, you know? (laughs) This fucking... Like, incest You did listen to the video, right? Right! And and it's... it's, I didn't even get into the messy details, you know? I'm from the South, and I know that's not good. (laughs) That is recent, though, that the state told us no. Um, Yeah, yeah. Right. (laughs) It's still legal. Right, right, right. <laughs> Good goodness. <laughs> I don't even know. We're not ending on that, are we? No, 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 no. PAX is happening right now. Oh, is it? Yeah. It's yeah. happening this weekend, Labor Day weekend. So is Dragon Con. Right. And I'm yeah. guessing people in this chat are at neither right now. No. I don't think so. Oh! Uh, uh, someone said talk about Max Payne. Oh yeah, you pl- you streamed that a little bit. Yeah, I did. With your new best friend, Mega Jose. No. Oh, that was something else. Yeah. Um. No, that was Rurse and Sarah. Ah, Rurse. Yeah, and then I did another one with Metabot after I beat Monster X and Cape Story. Nice. Um. Yeah. No. Um. I feel bad. I could barely hear Rurse the whole time. Uh. 
But get like, a better microphone, Rurs. Right. Sarah's awesome. So, uh, what do you call it? Yeah, so Rurs needs a better microphone. Sarah's awesome. Metabot was cool. I like Metabot. I met him in real life at uh, PAX 2011. We both did. That's right. Um, yeah. Good guy. Good fella. Yeah. Um, let's see, Metabot. Oh, Max Payne, right? And it's funny now I have all three Max Paynes currently in my house. But, um, do you ever play that series? The only thing I know about Max Payne is that the main menu has him drinking for a very long time. Wait, wait which one? Three? Three, right? Isn't that, you know, the main menu yeah, is yeah, yeah, drinking yeah. and smoking? Yeah, yeah, and It's yeah. like the hero. Yeah. Well, that's, that's the interesting thing about Max Payne is he's not a very idealized hero. Mm. You don't want to be Max Payne, but he's still doing awesome shit, you know? All right. Is he a brony? He, he is. No. Um, okay. he, that would be, I think, the best part of Max Payne 4, <laughs> where he, like, he quits. Just a really odd reveal. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> he's talking about it, like... I mean, like, he's he's drinking and smoking that menu, it zooms out a little bit, and he's watching that on TV. <laughs> yeah, it's like, I couldn't stand the city anymore. <laughs> All I had to do was watch Fluttershy and Applebottom talk about whatever, you know. Right. Apparently, by the way, there's a pony named Pinkie Pie, and that annoys the shit out of me. Not because of PewDiePie, just because of that name. That's like, it's like cash times a million to me. <laughs> That's like icky, icky, toilet sticky or whatever it was. You know? Anyway. Oh, yeah, from the, yeah. Sorry. Um, but that would be great if Max Payne were a pro. Uh, it's, if you ever play Max Payne 1, one of the best things about it, it's just inadvertently very funny, is it seems like they didn't know what they were going for when they started making the game. Because the character model of Max has this smug kind of face. Where it's like this big smiley like smirk, you know, like one side of his, but he's talking about really fucked up, depressing shit. So like he'll yeah. be like, like I couldn't believe my wife and child are dead, and then they look at him and he's like smiling while he's saying it. <laughs> <laughs> like it's like everything is sarcastic. I mean, it's great. <laughs> so um, what I liked about the first two Max Payne games is they were relatively um, rooted in reality. Meaning, like, action movie kind of reality. Like, you don't do anything nuts. It's not, like, dead to rights. No, just slowing down time. Pretty cash. Well, you know what it is, too? When you slow down... In the first Max Payne, when you slow down time, you still moved and aimed and slow. Like, in, in bullet time. Like, your reactions weren't actually faster. It was like, maybe Max is thinking faster or something, you know? But you actually slowly aim the gun in bullet time, right? All right. So that was actually... <coughs> excuse me. Like, pretty... It was pretty good that way. And, like, you couldn't take so many hits... Granted, painkillers healed you, but whatever. You and know? did you see the Max Payne movie? I, I didn't see the Max Payne okay. movie. Okay. Did you? Just wondering if Mark. No, I was just wondering if Mark Wahlberg also does that. <laughs> I kind of want to now because I saw Silent Hill Revelations, and that was a great movie. For all the... <laughs> Have you seen that yet? You, I told you I would, but I just haven't yet. You got it. I, it's it's hard to watch a movie that you know is going to be really bad mm -hmm. when you have nothing else but the movie in front of you. Yeah. No. I feel like I would need a, like a group of people to watch that with. <laughs> so come to our PAX panel. <laughs> ne um, right. No, uh, what do you call it? Max, so my, my, the weird thing about Max Payne 3 is like Max has really gone downhill to the point where it's, a, I mean, the character, um, to the point where it's a little, I, I feel pretty unrealistic. Because he's like, he's talking about like, Drinking and doing drug dealers like every fucking day and just being strung the fuck out, you know? Sure. And it's like, you're probably not surviving that many gunfights in that situation. You know what I mean? Like, they, like, you don't look at a crack house and say, this could be the barracks for my perfect army. You know, like, it's kind of weird that way. And then the thing that kind of bugged me is besides the overly, slightly overly long cutscenes, um, there's a scene where like, uh, in chapter two, where you're in a helicopter, someone's shooting a rocket launcher at you, and Max is ha act inadvertently hanging un upside down from the bottom of the helicopter, shooting the rocket as it comes toward the helicopter. And you, the player, have to shoot the rocket out of the air. And keep in mind, he's supposed to be drunk. You know? So it's <laughs> like, well, I guess this is not anywhere near rooted in reality anymore, you know? So, I don't know. You kinda lo it kind of lost me there. And one funny thing, apparently I've been reading, the Portuguese is fucking awful. Like, if you speak Portuguese, like, all the voice actors sound absolutely terrible. Hmm. Like, you, it, it, it's apparently very funny if you look at what they're really saying, like, the translation, because it doesn't match up at all. 
It's the room of it's like the Portuguese room, more or less. Interesting. That said, now that because I, I can complain about everything, I'm starting to dig it. It's I think normal's a little too easy and hard's a little too hard. You know, like it's meant to be. It's a game that's... maybe the re- answer is somewhere in the middle. It's a game that was meant to be played on PC. And you can tell it really needs mouse control for like the fine tuned kind of stuff. For the aiming and such, yeah. Yeah, and so you can kind of have like. Um, Guided aiming. There's another word for that. You know where it like kind of helps you. Or kind of like hovers over where you want to aim. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. Or it, like it's supposed. But like I found even using the lower setting of that felt a little like dead to rights. Where the minute you stop aiming and start again, Max is already targeted on a guy while he's like shoot diving or whatever. You know. Right. And uh, I mean, I will say one thing is that um, it doesn't have regenerative health. So a lot of times I've been kind of screwed over because I'm like, oh shit, I'm out of painkillers and I'm at a bad checkpoint, you know? So painkillers are the health packs? Yeah, basically. Um, the game does have a, I, I kind of think this is a neat effect where it, like, it fucks Mac up, so it fucks up Max a little and he takes a painkiller. You know? How does it compare to Dead to Rights? <laughs> I, I really did like the first Dead to Rights. Um, it had a charm about it, sure. Yeah, and it was, it was fun to play. I mean, it was a little repetitive, obviously, but I like some of the stuff. They really broke up a lot of the boredom of it, you know. Um, and I like the first two Max Payne games a lot. Three, I'm having trouble with. I feel like the cutscenes are long. I don't give much of a shit about the characters, you know. It's like, I, and I don't really understand like some of it. It's like, and I'm not supposed to, but like. Max is, like, originally, like, a New York cop or lived in New Jersey. His wife and kids get killed. It kind of goes over the edge, killing... You know what I mean? Yeah. All that stuff. This time around, it's years later. He's, you know, obviously he's looked for solace in the bottle, and he somehow ends up in security detail for rich people in Sao Paulo. I just don't understand why you'd ever hire him. You know, like... (laughs) He's, like, he's always grumpy. Nobody likes talking to him. And, or no, it's, it's very weird. He seems like this depressed, brooding character who, you know, but everyone seems to like him for no good reason. He's got a really impressive resume. No, it's like, hey, Max, are you enjoying the party? No, I hated every second of it, and every time this asshole started to talk to me, I just think I needed a drink and my wife and kids back. And I'm like, hey, Max, so you're having a good time, Woo! right? Yeah, it's like, but they all do that. There's like a <laughs> Russian guy, and it's like, like, Max, dearest of all my friends, how are you? I hated Vladimir so much, you know. <laughs> he was looking at my girlfriend, and I didn't like it any bit. You know what I mean? Does his hair kind of drape in front of his eyes, and he has to swoosh it back a lot? It's all black and stuff? <laughs> no, but the best thing is, if he was like that in the first game, except he was smug the whole time. <laughs> god damn. So would you recommend Max Payne 3? I would. Ricky Lime says, oh god, that Vlad impression. But <laughs> I don't know if that's good or not. <laughs> anyway. That's good. Hey, Indie Struck, don't spoil Max Payne 2. Uh, who cares? Um, I don't know. I, so I like the Max Payne games a lot, uh, the first two. Um, third one, Jury's a little out right now, but I'm, I'm, st- I'm enjoying it. I re-rent, I opted to re-rent it. For another dollar? Yes. Yes. Uh, for another, th- I actually rented it, yeah, for three, another three dollars. Basically, so. Hmm. Another three days. So I'm gonna try to finish it, but. Yeah. That's Ma- that's Max Payne three. You playing any other games? You got anything you can talk about? I'm mostly playing Spelunky and Papers Please, but I've been interested in the news that came out of PAX recently. KG in a fune, in a fune, fune, fune has a Kickstarter for a new spiritual sequel to Mega Man. Spiritual sequel to Mega Man, you say? It's not a Mega Man title. But it has a lot of Mega Man y like things. It's called Mighty Number no. Nine. Interesting. And he has a Kickstarter out for it right now. <laughs> that has, as of this recording, let me refresh the page, has seven hundred seventy thousand five hundred twenty three dollars out of its nine hundred dollar goal, so it's gonna meet that goal pretty handily by October first, I think. Oh, cool, alright. Cause people love them classic Mega Man games. Can I just say something? Someone pointed out in the chat. Does Ina, is Ina, uh, Ina Fune, whatever. Does Ina Fune really need a Kickstarter? Um, I don't know. You know, but I, I feel like the big problem with like big companies and things like that is that money when it, it comes from investors who are just looking for an ROI, they don't really give a shit about the actual. You know what I mean? And they kind of try to 
have a say in what happens too. Yeah, I mean, or like if your game, if you're like, look, I I need my game, I need three more months, they might be like, no, no, you got three more days. Yeah, no, ship it. Like you promised me, like an ROI. You know so what I mean? He will have more control for sure. Yeah, well, if you have the money, you know. Yeah, but this isn't a Mega Man game per se, but it is very similar to one. Mm-hmm. So I'm just reading this from the Kickstarter page. So you don't play as Mega Man, you play as Beck, not the singer, but the ninth in a line of powerful robots. Mm. And the plot line actually seems to follow kind of one similar to the fan game Mega Man game that came out fairly recently, Mega Man Unlimited, that I streamed. There's mm-hmm. a computer virus that's infected a bunch of mechanized stuff. The Beck has not been infected by it, so you run, you jump, you blast, you transform... There's some. There's six stages. It says use weapons and abilities stolen from enemies. So obviously very Mega Man esque. Mm-hmm. But not only that, but apparently he also will have transformative capabilities of some degree. Oh. And it's a game being developed exclusively for PC. Really? Is being developed for PC with gamepad support. Be made available through Steam and DRM free digital distribution methods. Ah. I like that DRM free stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It's only in the design phases right now, so not a whole lot as far as footage and such to see, but it looks pretty interesting. Hmm. Very interesting. It's not only killing bosses that gets back new powers, according to the Kickstarter page. Taking out enemies with a certain weapon or hitting them in their weak spot can expose one of three types of cell energy that Beck can sap. Store and unleash later his own mighty skills. So that kind of sounds like that whole Metal Gear Rising thing where you squeeze people's spines and get energy. Diabetes wouldn't stop shutting the hell up about his stupid goddamn Mega Man clone. I could care less. I'm sorry, what? Hmm? No, nothing. Um, I think your stream just got haunted, sounds like. Oh, God. Hmm. Anyway. Uh, no, that's, that sounds interesting. Um, I haven't played any of the, uh, the, I haven't played any of the Mega Man fan games, honestly. There aren't that many of them. There was another one that came out recently, apparently. But it doesn't have gamepad support, and I can't ever get Joy to Key to work the way I want it to, so... I've never tried Joy to Key on my, uh... My, my laptop. Why don't, I, why don't we just say it? It, won't, it probably won't work. There, you're yeah. happy. So therefore, the fan game probably sucks. Boom. Boom. Suck. <laughs> <laughs> We're starting over, by the way. Oh, good, okay. Yeah. So um, anything else we got? Chad, is there anything that we missed? No, nothing. We got no. it all. We've covered everything. Every video game conversation that could be had has been had here, and we're not even at the PAX or the Dragon Con right now. No, we're not. That's why you come here. We should be your number one source for video game news. Absolutely. If you want to hear about breaking things like Max Payne 3... <laughs> well, who doesn't? Then, yeah. Then you come to us. Alrighty. All right. Well, I think that was a very nice podcast. If I, if you were here with me, I would shake your hand, but instead I'm scratching my balls. Okay, that's fair. I'll scratch my balls as well. Diabetes, dearest of all my friends. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> One, two. All right. Two balls. <laughs> Being scratched. Uh, uh, <laughs> that's that's uh, a good way to end it is to count scratching It is. Yeah, absolutely. That's how we're going to end every stream from now on. That's all right. Dead to rights. Take easy, everybody.